Hi, this is Dave Chenault with Skylight Systems, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up Sidekick 365 XRM Enterprise in a language that's local to your marketplace. We're going to start off looking at Sidekick 365, the XRM Enterprise Edition, in the U.S., and let's look at an account. It's a good reference point to see how things change as we install different ones. So here we've got a state a zip code, and if we look at opportunities, you'll see that the amount is formatted in U.S. dollars as well as U.S. date formats. There's a few other things as well. If we go into an opportunity, for example, and we select the edit option, and we select a drop down, you'll see all of these in English, as you would expect, and they're localized to the U.S. market. These are terms that are familiar to salespeople in the US. So we have a full featured CRM solution that will install in Office 365 or on premise on your SharePoint servers and you purchase this in the App Store. Now we want to take a look at how does this look in different languages and different localized versions. So let's take a look at what it looks like in Japan. We have a version we've created for the Japanese marketplace and we're going to take a look at how that looks. So I'll take just a second here to see that. Okay, and the way it works is that you have a host site that you create in SharePoint and you set uh, the language preference and the localization and then you install the app within that site. So here's a site for Japan underneath the root of the environment of that whole farm. And you'll see everything here is Japanese, which is interesting. Now let's go into the app. Let's look at Psychic 365 Enterprise running in Japanese. And I'm logged in as the admin, so a lot of data does not appear on the front page, but I can see everything as I go through it. So let's take a look at the accounts. Now one thing to notice that's interesting is that I can show the English language within a Japanese app. It's very interesting to see how this all works. Let's go into an, uh, an account and we'll look at some opportunities to look at differences here. So here's an account in the Japanese version. And since I don't speak Japanese, I went ahead and created data in English. Now this also brings up another interesting and important point. Today, when you install an app, it's installed everywhere the same, meaning it looks at the site settings and the settings of the app when you install it to determine what screens and what language to show. In the future, we're hoping that this capability will be enhanced so it'll look at the member preference. And the idea would be, you know, you would log in and based on what your you know, current local language preference is, we could flip the interface pretty easily. So it's something we're thinking about in the future. Today, it's one language across all users, but there's not to say that we couldn't um, look at ways to make it flip based on where you are. So there could be a truly global app, or it could be an enhancement that Microsoft adds to the app marketplace. But we're talking about today, and let's take a look in detail at what it looks like in Japanese. So you'll notice, first of all, that the currency is yens. The date format is a is very different than the US. They actually use year, month, day, and that's different also than the European format. Um, they also have a different option when you look at addresses. Let's go ahead and take a look at this opportunity. And we'll take a look at the contact that's associated with that. It's Hiroki Suzuki. And you'll see here everything's in Japanese but the word zip, because we didn't find a equivalent uh, for zip, uh, it might be postal code, it might be something in a different language, but in the Japanese language, we found that it was zip, or this is the best we could do. Uh, we may change this in the future, but you will see everything else in the Japanese character set. Okay, and also if you want to edit this, you can come in. Notice that the rollover was in English, but my drop downs are going to be in Japanese where it's appropriate different options here, etc. Buttons are in Japanese as well. But then data is in English. And this is a data lookup here. 
So very interesting to see how all this works. Now let's go in and set all this up for Australia because that's got some very interesting twists on it that I want to go through with you in some detail. Let's go on into that route again. And what we're going to do now is set up a site for Australia. We're going to pick the English language, but we're going to localize it to the Australian marketplace and install Sidekick into that environment, into that team site. So here we go. We're coming back into the sort of root of all of these demos. And now I'm going to come up into my site settings, site contents, and let's pick a new subsite, and we'll call it Australia. So here we go, we'll create a new one. We'll call this one Australia, and Australia. We're going to go ahead and pick English, but you'll see all the language options here, and there could be localizations within each language. It's extremely powerful, and we'll show you how this works and a team site, and I'm going to go ahead and use unique permissions. And I'll say create. Now I'll come in here and you'll see I have different groups created automatically, and I'm going to add the users of this site and this app into my members. And this is all part of setting up Sidekick, so let's go ahead and add them in very quickly. And then we'll get to some more interesting things. So I'll throw in Brad. If I spell it right. A couple more users to add, because we want them all to be able to come in and try out the site. And again, you'll be going through creating entries to your members group that should be able to see the app. The last one's David So. So there we go. I'm OK now. It's all good. And I'm going to go ahead now and say OK, and the site will get created. The next thing we're going to do as we get into this is we're going to set up localization for Australia. And that's important because we want the currency to display properly, the dates, etc. So let's go into our site settings. And we're going to look underneath the options in site settings for regional settings. And here we're going to pick Australia, English Australia. So let's take a look at that. So English Australia. And then we can also look at the calendar. We can look at the date format. We can look at the time zones. Um, I'm going to look very quickly. If I don't find it fast, I'll go somewhere else. But it looks like we could put it here underneath uh, Darwin. And we'll say OK. We can also set when the days of the week are, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of options here. So we're good. Now we have English Australia. Now I want to put in some groups. I'm getting ready to set everything up. So I go to my groups. And I want to make a new group for the people that can set security in Sidekick. And one of the requirements of our system is there needs to be a group that can set up security, and they need to have full control in the permissions. So I'm going to call it Australia XRM Admin. That's the group. Everyone can see them. People can edit membership, and I'll give them full control. And we'll create that. OK, we're going to add in Brad and Alan, because we want them to be able to add in new I items and be able to set the security profile. And this is, again, specific to our app. And things are looking very good now. We have the group set up. We have um, the localization set up. Now we are ready to install Sidekick. So let's go do that. Now we come into Site Contents or Add an App. Let's go to Add an App. You can do it in both places. So I'll take just a second here. And then what I'll do is I'm going to select the app from our internal organizational catalog because we have this set up as a demo. You would pick it from the SharePoint store. 
So if we come take a look here, you would normally go to SharePoint Store and buy the app and install it. In my case, I'm going to pick it from my organization and I'm going to install it. And one thing I want to make sure I do, if, under the language options, this is very easy to miss, but select that and make sure you've got the right language selected. You can actually override the language of the site here if you need to. So you could say, oh, let's go really crazy. Let's throw a Japanese site, but install an English Australia version of Sidekick. I've never done it, but I'm sure you could pull it off. Um, so in this case, though, we're great to go. And if you do the drop down, you'll see these are all the options we have for Sidekick 365 XRM Enterprise. We have everything from Norwegian and Dutch, Danish, you can read it, Portuguese for Brazil, etc., the Japanese. But English Australia is what we want now, and I'm going to say trust it. So it'll take just a minute for it to add in. Let's see what it does here. And again, it's grabbing it from our site app catalog for our organization, but in your case, it'll grab it from the marketplace. And it takes just a minute to add the app in. Once we get the app put in, I'm going to go next and import data from Excel to show you how that works. Now I have a spreadsheet opened up now for you to take a look at. I've got Australian accounts in a CSV file and this CSV template is free obviously. We'll send that to you if you ask for it. And we have a little utility that's also free that'll let you import data into Sidekick 365 XRM Enterprise. So we have the account ID and the name etc. And one important thing to notice over here is the security profile. So the next step in the process, once the app gets created, is I will create entries so that Sidekick knows how to assign security profiles. And let me clean this up a bit. I'll just save that. Yes. And I'm going to also close this down now. It's very particular, so you need to have things set up just so. I've already saved it, so I'm good there. I'm going to also take a look at my opportunities real quick and make sure they look okay. Same idea here. There's my profile. So you'll see that the data is all set to go. It's been formatted in the proper columns. And now I'm going to use the import utility once I set up my different profiles. So there we go. We're all set to go. Let's go into the app. And we'll set up our security profiles. And then we'll import the data and see how it looks. So again, I'm taking you through every step that you would go through to set up a localized version if you're going to buy it from the marketplace and install it in Office 365. It'd be similar on premise. So it takes a minute to bring up the app the first time and look at the, on the left side, the menu is initializing, it's finishing the setup, and now we're all set to go. The drop downs are as you would expect, uh, they're in English depending upon what language preference you've selected, all of this will change, right? You've seen that. Now let's go to profiles. And we're going to set up those two security profiles and I'll discuss this now. So when I set up that security profile, I want to make sure it has the same name as what I had in the spreadsheet. So I have the Allen S profile and I have a SharePoint group that can read anything that has this profile applied. And I have another group that can edit anything that has this profile applied to it. And anything meaning accounts, contacts, opportunities, and the things attached to them. Let's go ahead and do another one for Brad. And I'll make a Brad profile as well, security profile that is. These could be any name you want, but just make sure they're consistent from your import data. And here comes the Brad edit group, and I'll save it. And before I import, I want to take a quick look. Everything looks good. The names look good. Now we're ready to import. We have a group set up that can access the app. The app has been installed, localized for Australia. We have security groups all set up within the app so that when the data gets imported, it will look at this profile and set the appropriate security based on who's in those groups. We all do that for you behind the scenes. So the next step for us is going to be to import the data. So we're going to come into our utility here. 
It's a little exe that runs locally. We're going to pick the file we want to import. In this case, it's Australia Accounts. And now we want to tell it where to import to. So the next step is going to be looking back at our Australia site. And let's just double check we have everything set here. Okay. So we look all set to go here. Let's grab that. And let's go ahead and clean that up. I am going to make sure that I have the full qualified name. And in this case, let me go ahead and grab that. I want to be actually at the root. So let's go back here to this. I want to be at the home page when I grab this. And let me go ahead and put that into the URL. I'm going to take all this away here. Now. We're going to clean this up for the demo. And here we go. Here's the part we want right here. This is the fully qualified URL of the app. And I'm going to put that into my app URL. And then give my name. And my password. Okay, so I think we're set to go. Let's go ahead and sign in, see how we do. Now it says there's 40 accounts to import. Do I want to do that? And I'll say yes. So it takes a moment to go ahead and do that. What's happening now is, if you recall in the data, I didn't look at it too closely, but we, ought to, we had a main contact with each account. So what's happening with the import utility is it's looking at the data in Excel, it's loading it into Office 365 and our app. It's creating an account record. It also creates a contact record for that main contact. And then it links the main contact to the account. And so it'll take just a moment here to complete importing. While it's doing that, let's like, take a look and see how it's coming along. Let's go to Accounts. And you'll see we have data streaming in now. Let's look at this Avum party. And you'll see this one has Brad S. Profile with Brad as the owner. And if we look at Malcolm Murray, his data is already in there as well. So you'll see it's very robust on the way that we can import data in pretty quickly. You just need to get it into a format that we can read. And so here you go. You can see different uh, pieces of data here with Australian addresses, different phone numbers formatted for Australia, etc. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. Now when we come in to this record of this contact, you can see he's got city-state postcode though is different here. Some places in the world use the word province, some places use state. I think in Australia it's a mix of state and province and we asked Australians and they said state's okay. We understand if it's the province, we don't have to change that. But you will see that it does say postcode instead of zip code. Also, you'll notice the phone numbers look a little different. That's okay. We're totally fine with that. And if we look again at the way uh, dates and things are in here, it should be formatted for the local market. Everything looks just subtly different here in this case. Australia is pretty close to the U.S. Now, we don't have any opportunities yet. We're about to import those in. So let's go back. The utilities at item 24 of 40, so it's just sort of chugging along. So while it's doing that, we'll just sort of review all of the different things we've looked at in this video. The first thing was we saw that Sidekick 365 XRM Enterprise is a full-featured CRM solution that installs as an app in Office 365 or on SharePoint on-premise. And we have it set up for 10 different languages, everything from English to Japanese, Italian, Spanish, French, German, Danish, Dutch, Norwegian, uh, Brazilian, Portuguese, and I'm forgetting a couple in the middle there. And we also have it localized in four different local versions. We have South Africa, English. We have UK, English, 
Australia English and U.S. English. And the changes there are going to be subtle. There'll be maybe province or s might be zip or it might be postal code instead of uh, the same term throughout all those. The currency will be different. The date formats will be different. I showed you how to install these, how to pick a localized setting for the host site, and then also how to pick a localized setting for the app itself. And I showed you a site running in Japanese and a site running in English. And now I'll say this one's in Australia. Now we're done with those 40 items that we just imported. We'll go take a look in a minute. But let's start with the opportunities next. So there's my Australian opportunities. I want to import those. It's the same site. I'm going to put in my username and password again. and my password. And this is all live in Office 365 in the US on a Friday afternoon here. So I've got everything typed in properly now. It looks like let's go ahead and sign in. And there's 40 opportunities to import as well. Let's go ahead and import those. It'll take just a moment to do that. And it's nice we have a little counter here that tells us where we are in the process. So I can refresh my page. I've already got three of them in there. And I start to see now different things coming in. Um, the date format here is it looks suspiciously like the US because we don't have uh, anything that would really stand out. But uh, it is Australian uh, version of things. And then if we look at the dollars, they use the same dollar sign we do here in the US. Let's look at uh, contacts while it's coming in. Now, you'll remember that I said as it imported the account, it was also going through and creating a record of a contact for the main contact of each of those accounts. And this is another feature of Sidekick. We don't directly tie a contact to an account. You can link a contact to many different things in the system. Could be linked to different accounts, different opportunities. But there will always be a main contact with an account. And then you can use that contact in other places as well. It's a very nice feature. And you can even create a contact that isn't attached to anything in the system. It's also very handy. So let's see where we are. We're at 16, just chugging along. And we'll look at those opportunities one last time. OK, it's about finished. It's just working through. And while we wait for it, let's just take a quick look at some of the other language options. It's fun to see the same app shown in different ways. Let's see how it looks for Brazil. And this would be Portuguese, but localized to the Brazilian marketplace. And we come in there. And it's the same login in this case. It's the admin function. But we'll come in now and look at the contas, which in this case are the accounts in Portuguese. And you'll see how it's picking up the proper formatting of different characters within the app, because it's localized to Portuguese. Let's take a look at the account while we're here. And again, you can see everything localized to Portuguese. And if we edit it, all the drop downs will be properly formatted as well, as well as the buttons, etc. So this truly is an international product. And the platform with Office 365 for apps truly is international in nature. If you're a developer of apps like we are, this is really a new opportunity that's going to let you expand your market to virtually anywhere in the world. And we've seen that. We are having uh, opportunities come at us from nearly every country where we have a localized version today. Now let's finish up with Australia just to see that final opportunity coming in. It's at 39, and we'll soon be at 40. I'll come in while it's doing that. And you'll see sort of the way this all comes together now. We have a site for each language. It's localized to that language and the local settings for that language. And here's our app. And as we come into it, it 
picks up the settings that we had when we installed that app. And we should be done now with all of our different installations. We can see that it's done. And if we go look at the opportunities, we'll have 40 of them there. Okay, now we have other videos that talk about how the security works. And as an admin, I see everything, but security trims what I can see based upon the profile we applied. All right, well, I hope you found this to be an interesting video. It's a little bit of a long one, but we covered a lot of ground. And if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us at info at skylightsystems.com. That's info at S-K-Y-L-I-T-E-S-Y-S-T-E-M-S.com, all one word. And again, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Hope you learned a lot by watching this video, and I hope it's uh, piqued your interest in Sidekick 365 XRM Enterprise for your organization.